Hi everyone, Robbo here. You're listening to the Blues Focus podcast. Keep right on. Hi guys and welcome back to the Blues Focus podcast. Before we get into today's podcast, I'd just like to give a big shout out to our current patrons. And if you'd like to join these names in the brand new Blues Focus Hall of Fame, uh, you can join our Patreon page for just £1 a month. Perks included um, will be monthly giveaways and early access to guest pods. The link will be in the description anyway for our uh, Patreon packages. But that's enough from me. Let's get straight into today's Blues Focus podcast. Thank you for joining us as always. Hello and welcome to the Blues Focus podcast with me, your host, John Graham. Once again, many thanks for taking the time to download this pod. And if you're viewing this on YouTube, please make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any future content. And always leave your comments. We always like to debate those as we sort of go forward over the coming weeks. And if you're uh, downloading iTunes, then please rate us. Uh, the audience is growing pretty much day by day. So massively appreciate that. And yeah, as I think hopefully maybe a, a corner is being turned, then uh, hopefully there'll be a little bit more positivity than maybe there has been over recent weeks. So anyway, enough of that. Um, introductions. Uh, Carl, how are you, my friend? Yeah, good. Thank you, mate. How are you? Not not too shabby. Not too shabby, considering yeah. we're off the back of a defeat. But uh yeah, always could be a bit better, I suppose. And Tom, how are you, mate? Uh, yeah, no, I'm good, thank you. And I uh, completely agree on the defeat side of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think, um, well, as ever, let's get involved. I think uh, off the back of yesterday, <laughs> um, mixed feelings, I think. Um, you know, as the gaffer said, you, ne- you never like to be happy with a defeat. But... Um, Feels a little bit different this type of defeat to to ones that we've had previously. So uh, I think as ever, let, let's just um, dip into team selection as we always do. And Carl, I'll open up with you. What, what, any thoughts? Any surprises? Or do you think that was coming? Support for today's Blues Focus podcast is brought to you by none other than Manscaped. Manscaped specialised in all your below the waist grooming needs. They want. They've only just recently landed in the UK, so you could be first one of the first men in the country to even try out their products. So uh, get looking at them now. They're definitely big in other countries, and they finally dropped in the UK. To get twenty percent off plus free shipping, use the code BluesFocus20 at Manscaped.com. A bit of both, like. I, I understand why he didn't change anything. You know, they, they played well. One of our biggest issues with Karanka was that he was constantly changing things. Um, you know, we'd have a great victory and then he'd make like nine changes. Um, but I was a little, on the flip side of that, I was a little bit surprised. I thought, certainly Harper, I think, has now played nine games in a row after not playing consistently for yeah. 18 months a year. Yeah. Uh, Bella as well obviously took that knock, um, although it didn't seem to affect him. You know, I just... And I think uh, Boya came out and said it afterwards. You know, he he, he admitted, he held his hands up and said, maybe you should yeah. have changed it up a bit. But a bit surprised that he didn't change anything, but I wasn't unhappy with it. You know, it's always good to keep consistent team. And I think most teams in any league try to keep a consistent team, don't they, week in, week out? So, yeah, uh, yeah fairly happy with it, to be honest. I'm, I must admit, I absolutely loved him saying that. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Definitely. But yeah, a big man to, to sort of so quickly after a, a game to really sort of critique himself. And, and I, I'm a massive, massive fan of that. So a lot of respect um, just for those comments. And Tom, what did you think? Uh, in all honesty, mate, I, I wasn't even downhearted by the performance. Dis- despite getting absolutely plastered after the defeat, <laughs> <laughs> I actually wasn't that downhearted after the game, to be honest. Um, in all honesty, I think we kept our heads up for the majority uh, I think we only kind of dropped our heads a little bit once the third one went in and then they kind of had a bit of little little bit of late pressure, but they didn't really look to completely add a fourth. Um, but overall, the squad, uh, when he released the lineup, I was happy because, uh, you know, we, we all like to see a bit of consistency and that was definitely a problem under Karanka. But, you know, like you say, it does take a big man uh, to come out and admit his mistakes, which is something Karanka, I don't think he ever did, uh, not once. I think he um, shrugged those off, to be fair. Mate. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> individual errors, individual errors. And you're not seeing that from Lee. Like, he's being quite straight and upfront, admits that he did wrong. But I think us as Blues fans, I think we'd have all kept it the same as well. I don't think we'd have changed it. And at the end of the day, he's only been in the job for four or five days. So we can't expect 
you know, the world of him. Uh, but overall, I was happy with the lineup. If I was expecting anyone to maybe be in the squad, it would would have probably been Lico, to be honest, mm. just because obviously Bella had that slight little injury um, against Reading. So that was my only probable kind of possible change, I suppose. Um, yeah. No, I was happy personally, and um, we'll get on to the performance and stuff. But I was really, really happy with how we played. Yeah, I, I think that uh, I said I think I said in the last pod. Uh, and Carl, you've just touched on it. Harper, he, he seems to have struggled on a couple of occasions when there's been games very close to each other, and and I would agree it's because you know you know he hasn't played a whole heap, um, and I think it's it's going to be very difficult to keep if you, if we're going to stay with a four four two, and we'll talk about formations how that switched over the course of the game, but just putting you know setting your stall out four four two and having those. You know, Garder and Harper front and centre, and they're going to, you know, have to pick up an absolute shit ton of work. It's a big ask, you know, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday. Um, but you know, not going to be an after timer in any way, shape, or form. I think the the, the previous performance, um, everybody must have been on a huge high from it. Um, I think it probably would have done a little bit more damage than good if he'd have changed it. Um, because it, it just seemed to be such a, a step change from what we'd seen before. Um, and maybe he felt that, you know, well, if we go one more time, we've got a big break coming up. And maybe that that's the story he said to them, you know, we just need one big effort and then we can just sort of maybe have a rest, sort of regroup, um, reset a little bit. Um, and then when we go again after the international break, then... It, it gives everybody a bit of time to recover and maybe that would have been in time maybe for me where he'd make a change because he's got so much time with the squad. So, um, no, I must admit, I I think I said in the last part, off, I felt we restricted Reading to not a lot in the previous game and I felt if we could go with the same sort of energy that that would be the same scenario for this game. So, going into that first half, Tom, how do you think we approached the game? What, what, what were your thoughts? I think first 15 minutes, Watford really showed their quality, mm. in all honesty. Um, I think we were definitely caught off guard and caught by surprise by that early goal. There was an extreme amounts we could have done to uh, prevent it. I think Etheridge did well to save. Um, by the way, just quickly on Etheridge, I've seen a lot of, a lot of people giving him stick on social media recently um, for recent performances. I know he's probably been a bit edgy, but I think he's, I think he's improving gradually. Just need to giving time uh, so I thought it was a little bit unfair because he didn't exactly have the worst game ever uh, I felt like a lot of the goals he couldn't really have done much about hmm. um, however in fairness, in, in fairness Tom sorry to butt in no worries <laughs> even, even, even though he shipped three I think he had a better game this this game versus um, Reading yeah to be, to be honest I, 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 I completely agree game. So, sorry. Yeah, just thought... No, no worries. Um, I completely agree with you. I'm glad you made that point because I do think he had a better game. Um, I think it's just tough right now because I don't think you can always expect keepers to have the best performance ever when you're playing a side like Watford. Um, in fairness, and I just thought Watford were brilliant. Like, uh, the, the whole game, not just that first half, but even that first half in particular, they showed their quality. Like, yeah. they were well worth paying for, in fairness. You know, it's... I just I think we were definitely caught off guard for the first goal and a bit unfortunate. Maybe the centre backs could have done a bit better to um react quicker and keep up with Semmer. Um you know that's that's the way Watford like to hurt teams. Uh, they have bags of pace up top. Uh, but no, I think we were just unfortunate really. Um but after those first 15 minutes I thought we really really took the game to them. Yeah. And it was it was a really it was a new look blue side to be honest. Like we never really took games like that two sides and we we really tried a lot of different things and Halilovic oh my god he's been a breath of fresh air under Lee Boyer I don't I don't get me wrong I thought he was decent under Karanka but I, he just looks insane he looks like he looks so much quicker and I think it's because Boyer has clearly given Halilovic free reign it, yeah. I think that's quite clear to see. And I do think that will be down to Craig Gardner having an input. You know, obviously he's picked Gardner's brains a lot, but I think Gardner will have told him that the quality Halilovic possesses and how we could utilise that. And I think we're really starting to do that. I think he's our most dangerous player on the pitch right now. Um, yeah. And Ty's definitely looked to neutralise him more in the second half because he's had such a good first half. 
Um, so no, if we can definitely capitalise on that more, and Bella's been good as well. Um, I just think our link up play down the right in particular was fantastic. 100%. And Colin, oh, Colin had a sitter. If he swings his left at that, he's got a possible chance of scoring it. Yeah. But he just he just didn't fancy it on his weaker side, unfortunately. Yeah, from what I've seen of Colin, he's not he's not really not two footed, I'd say. I'd say he was reasonably comfortable on his left because we've seen him play at left back before. Yeah. So um no, it surprised me. And I do think, you know, he strikes that we, we might be in with a chance of getting something um but we we did have our fair share of chances and harley dean had a blinder um maybe not the best game defensively but when he did go forward i think he had an effect on the game and uh juki was a bit unlucky probably didn't have his best game ever but he still put himself about a bit and scott hogan missed two big chances in that first half um yeah. so i just i do think it's similar to the karanka area in the sense that we still miss that clinical edge right now and I think once we've found that, we could really, really hurt sides. I really do believe that. So, um, no, I think we were just unfortunate against the top quality side in the end of that first half. Yeah, I, I would totally agree with all of that, to be honest with you, mate. I, I think that, um, I think we said on the last pod, it, there had to be an element of just tempering the, the last result because we're playing against a premiership team. You know, the reality is... Um, the players they have at their disposal everywhere. And I mean, everywhere. They're, they're, they're a class act. You know, they're a class act. And I think that was proven. Carl, what were your thoughts on the th first half? Do you think uh, any surprises? Or what, what do you think? Um, I, I echo and, and agree with a lot of, of what Thomas said. You know, um, I think the fence could have been a bit quicker. You know, I, I mentioned on the last pod that they're a bit slow on the turn sometimes. Um, and that was kind of, their reaction was a little bit slow for that. But then, that happens across all leagues. You know, that's not specifically our defence where the issue is there. Yeah. Um, I think the change of shape helped. You know, like you said, that first 15 minutes, Watford were incredible. Um, and uh, Bowyer then called in Harley over to, I think, while Duke was down. Yeah. Injured. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll say. Yeah, he didn't really um, do much, did he? <laughs> no, no. Um, while he was down injured, changing that shape. And it was a shape I don't think we've ever really seen at Blues ever. That that kind of 4-3-1-2. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I'd picked up that um, Halilovic had moved in field, but I totally missed that Max was now like a right right, right wing back, which uh, which was great. Um, and I think that really changed the game for us. You know, I think that put us a lot more on the front foot and it was great to see. Yeah. But even though we'd gone 1-0 down to a side as quality as Watford, it was still great to see them going forward and, and having a go rather than trying to go for damage limitation. Um, I think just dialing it back, one of the things that really struck me even before the game, and I, I think I tweeted it out, was that Sky asked Bo, yeah, you've gone with two strikers. You know, what, what's the thinking? And he went, we're here to win the game. Yeah. And that yeah. just shows the mentality difference, doesn't it? Yeah. From yeah. a week ago, where it was easily a winnable game, to it would have been nice to get something from Watford, but I think we all had a thought of, you know, we're probably not going to get anything here. Um, but hearing that was fantastic. And if that's what the players are hearing, what a difference that is. Yeah. Um, yeah, other than that, I think there's got to be a bit of work on, on set plays defensively. I think Messina went really close when Peds lost him. Yeah. Um, and he, and I think either Harley Dean got a block in or he, he put it wide from about three yards out. But other than that, there wasn't a lot between them, I think, you know, other than the early goal. You know, I think that they, they pushed on Hogan, had the chances that he had. You know, I think it's, yeah, I, I think we matched them almost from that 15 minutes onward, we, we grew into that game and grew in confidence. And I think that was fantastic to watch, to be honest. Yeah. And, and I think that, <clears throat> um, I, I don't, I don't think we should be, um, I think it'd be unfair if, if we didn't say that some, some of the, some of the play that we had whilst lots of it were great. I don't think Watford are conceding that first goal. If I'm being honest, I don't think they are. I think that, you know, you look at the passage of play, um, both Gardner and Harper got caught. There's a massive gap in between midfield and, and, and centre-back. Colin got pulled in um, and, and it, it, was, it was literally all over the place. And I suppose the most disappointed thing is that, to your point, Tom Etheridge has made an absolutely fantastic save and he hasn't been backed up. So yeah. without absolutely outing the defence, which I'm not going to do, I think it's things like that that Bowie needs to take this time to say, right, 
honeymoon period over, eight games left, when that situation arises again, you've got to anticipate a the shot coming in and the keeper saving it and what you're going to do then because it's not good enough to just stand and watch it happen and they both did. Um, so I, I was a little bit, oh yeah, as ever disappointed when you can see the goal, but I, I just think there is definitely work to be done there. One on shape and, and just two on that reaction. Um, mm. I thought Watford were absolutely exceptional at the back. Uh, first half, well, to be fair, and second. Um, Hughes, I don't think you're going to find a better sort of centre defensive midfielder in the league. And, um, you know, their, their captain was just, th- th- that's probably as good a performance as you're going to see. Um, from he, he was everywhere, Chalaber. He was absolutely immense. So His block on Bella was, was oh, just well that, that was our that best was... chance of the half. If he doesn't block that, we, we it's 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Bella's give that a right pisser. I mean, he's absolutely smashed it. Um, For me, Chalaber was man of the match. Oh, by God, by head, head, and yeah. shoulders, mate, head and shoulders, because you, you see performances like that, and, you know, if they don't go up, there, there should be people queuing up to sign him. I'd in be field. shocked if they. So didn't good, so good. Um, He's wearing that armband for a reason. Jesus, hundred percent, hundred percent. And and I think that there's been a couple of times, you know, Saturday and maybe I can't remember what game it was. Hogan's got a bit of a. Sheriff's badge head when he goes when he's got a pretty free header, it could go anywhere. I mean, he did the yeah. embed it, he came off yeah. his shoulder. He likes to shoulder things, yeah. Bit, um, <laughs> and, and you just you got know, a bit of a twitch there. You just wish that that was obviously Juki because that, that was a goal, yeah. Um, it's a yeah. goal. <laughs> um, but I, I think overall, I think Tommy made the point down that right hand side, it was an absolute joy to watch at times. Um, I've always been a big fan of wing backs. Uh, if I'm being honest, I'm not necessarily a, a four four two man. I think I think that's what we need now. If I'm being honest, a hundred percent, that's what we need now. Um, but I think that we did get a little bit overrun in the centre of the park, and that's why he switched it. Um, and and call your bang bang on the on the money with it did make a huge difference. And Colin, I thought he was exceptional all game. I really Going did. forward, I thought Colin was great. I think at the back, he probably could have been a little bit more tidy, but overall, it was solid. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it's... You know, don't want to go in with too much of sort of, you know, the rose-tinted sort of glasses, but mm. under Karanka, we might have lost that game 1-0. Yeah. But it would have been dog shit. It had been dog shit. We'd have created nothing. Ten men behind the ball. Yeah, we'd have, we'd have hung on. It, it'd have been, we'd have gotten nothing out of that game. And I think in that first half, and we'll talk about the second half in a bit, but I just think there were so many good things to take out of that first half, especially, that it then comes down to, are we clinical enough? So it's not we're not creating chances. We are creating chances. But we've now got to work a little bit harder on that because... You know, we, we've also got to revert back to eight games left. We're definitely going to have to win three of them, in my view, maybe four. Um, Especially after the other day's results. Yeah, yeah I mean, the, result, the results were, uh, you know, as good as they were in the week for us. They were absolutely fucking shocking for us the, on, on Saturday. Yeah. But, you know, that's ultimately what, what Lee's paid for. You know, we, we need to sharpen up in front of goal. We, we, we can't sort of, as much as we, we're really loving this moment, um, I, I do genuinely think that over the next sort of 10 days there needs to be a let's step back and let's let, let's assess and people shouldn't be um exempt from criticism because i think in front of goal we we weren't as good as we should have been um yeah, and, I think it, and i think if watford have had the chances that we had it certainly wouldn't have been known goals oh, so, God, yeah. so you know but but that being said i thought the first half we were massively competitive after that that goal yeah. went in uh, I think they were pissed off and rightly so with themselves because they could have defended it better. But the reaction is, you know, that's what you want. You want character and you want to see character. And I think we got that. So, so Tom, as we went into the second half, you know, what, what, were, your, what were your thoughts? Where, how do you think it would pa- play out? I was really worried, in all honesty, because, I, you know, I've seen so many times this season and under Karanka, and I think that was kind of my negative mindset creeping in a bit with Blues, uh, but... Uh, I was worried that we get neutralised for where we were causing Watford problems, which is out wide. I had the feeling that they were just going to kill off Elilovic, um and neutralise Colin a bit, but also pick out Bella 
Um, so I thought we were going to have to play more kind of central, sort of, sort of sort of a more central attacking route. Yeah. Um, in the second half, because I knew they probably looked to do that. However, we were comfortable, um, which again surprised me because I was, I, I had that worry. But in fairness, we um, we played similar, but we changed it up a little bit. I think our change, our shape was kind of changing throughout the game. Yeah. Um. And it was nice to see because they were confident doing it. And, you know, that makes me think back to when Karanka did that. Um, on multiple occasions, he changed the shape and we conceded. Um, but when we changed the shape, we still looked to take the game to them. We didn't look clueless. Mm. And it was almost makes you think, did we overcomplicate it too much under Karanka? Did we... Oh, Christ. Without exactly. Fucking doubt. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Doubt. And that seems Without to be... Doubt a common phrase right now, even from Lee Bowie, you know, overcomplicating things. And I think that's what we're kind of nullifying in this squad now. We're go- going back to basics, making everybody feel comfortable, but also being as expansive as possible. Um, and it's refreshing. Like, yeah. I still thought we were very competitive in that game. Even when it became 2-0, I thought we were unlucky. Um, you know, Juki runs into Pedersen and falls over. He, if he doesn't, if he doesn't bump into Pedersen, for me, he stops that goal. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's one of them things you really can't help. Like it's, it was such a such a tough one to see. Uh, but Juki's not the quickest either. Um, so you can't expect him to keep up with someone who is relatively quick in Chalaba. Um, and then the third goal, I think. That just shows the quality they have on that bench. Andre Gray, for me, is one of the best strikers in this division. Yeah. And the fact that he's on the bench for them is yeah. unbelievable and a credit uh, to you know how, how much squad depth they have yeah. and how much strength they have. So it's crazy. Um, and he showed his quality as soon as he came on because he's a pacey striker that likes to get in behind and he did that. Um, but again... We keep we keep doing this uh, over the last few games where we just lose the ball in midfield because we piss about a bit. Um, and I think it's happened the last three or four games, whether it's to Harper or Gardner. Um, so I do think that's probably something we need to sort out because uh, it does keep happening now, unfortunately, once or twice a game. Sometimes we can stop it, sometimes we can't. However, that, that, that midfield two got bullied by the midfield three of Watford. Um, I don't think they had bad games. I just yeah. thought, you know, they were outnumbered, which is fair. Um, so I think that's why we definitely tried to look to change the shape to that kind of 4-3-2. So they had more support. Um, but, you know, Watford's quality was still too much. You know, like you mentioned earlier, John, Will Hughes played. He's Naturally, he's more of a number 10, Will Hughes, or just a central midfielder. But he played a deep line playmaker yeah. role in that game and also defended well. So it also shows kind of how their players can adapt, adapt to different roles. And um, they're a Premier League side. They've, they've only lost two of their Premier League players, and that's uh, Adelaide Decore and Danny Welbeck. That's it. Yeah. Everyone else has stayed. So th- they are going to be tough to beat, and they were a completely different Watford side to the side we saw at St. Andrews. We play like that against the Watford that came to St. Andrews. We win that game 4-1, easy. Mm. <laughs> I honestly believe that because they were so poor. Um, but what Cisco has brought to that Watford side is immense and nobody expected it. But um, no, I think like Lebo, you said, don't, don't be disheartened because we really gave it a go and saw some really promising stuff in the first half and the second half. So uh, if we can take that into the next couple of games, especially against Swansea and Brentford, who Brentford, they're in dog shit form right now. They're really struggling to uh, maintain a, a spot in the promotion race. And Swansea are so up and down, it's unbelievable. They're good against the big sides, poor against the the bottom sides. So I think we can really, really look to get some points from those two games. Um, Don't be disheartened by where they are in the table. Um, Whereas Watford, I think, are going to get that second spot by a country mile, to be honest. I I don't don't doubt that. That probably rubber stamped, I think, the top two. 100%, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, But no, brilliant second half, anyway. Yeah, Carl, just on the, on the second half thoughts and maybe do you want to touch on the, the substitutions as it went on? Yeah, I mean, again, Tom's covered a lot of it pretty perfectly there. Um, not a lot else to say, is there, on that? Um, I think 
I think set pieces for me, I think a lot of the time we looked a little bit, you know, edgy. And I think that's just a combination where obviously Bo is trying to get them to do it a certain way. Crank had them set up a certain way. Yeah. But again, you know, it comes back to, we, we've got what, 10 days, two weeks, whatever now. He's got a lot of work to put in with those players. You know, everything yeah. before these two weeks is now gone. It's all about the next day. You know, that sprint yeah. till the end of the season now. Um, I think, I think I said it just before we came on, John, you know, like the fact that two, three, we were still going forward. We weren't yeah. looking to, to stop them gold, which was just refreshing to see, you know. Um, yeah, so so I was quite happy with that. I th- yeah, Tom said said it all, really. Um, the changes... I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know. Um, the changes, I think, I, most of them I, I expected, the one that was the shock was San Jose. I'm not going to lie. Oh, I was terrified. <laughs> um he, I was shocked to see him actually run back and, and win a ball, which, which uh, caught me out a little bit. But I, I sort of thought to myself, well, he needs to see these players in a setting in, the, in a championship game, doesn't yeah. he? You know, he needs to get the measure. Training is one thing. Yeah. Um, I would maybe introduce Sam Cosgrove a little bit earlier. I feel he came in a little bit too late. Um, and um, Sanchez just looked a little bit lost as well when he came on, I think. Um, and, and the thing with Sanchez, and hopefully Bo, you're stamping this out, is this looking for fouls. I know all players do it, but it's the constant yeah. throwing his hands up when he doesn't get anything. I think maybe the third goal or they had a chance where they raced clear maybe and he was on the floor waving his hands in the air expecting yeah. foul. I know that's the Spanish way and, and I understand all that, but it doesn't work like that in the championship. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my, most of the changes made sense. I think Leco did a good couple of bits and pieces. You know, we've seen a bit more positivity from him. Yeah. Um, but I've got to come back to Harley Dean. I think he, again, he had a few dodgy moments, but on the whole... Change, man. He just seemed to be in the right place at the right time for almost everything in that second half. Um, you know, and, and props in Roberts as well. I think they really start... Well, <laughs> hopefully they're starting to form a bit more of a solid partnership. Um, and I think that's maybe helping Etheridge as well. You know, yeah, he's now played behind that defence for, solidly for a few games. <clears throat> Hope, you know, that's what you need in the last you your base unit. You need them communicating and stuff. But... Um, yeah, other than that, the changes, yeah, all made sense, I think, to me. I, uh, there isn't really anyone I, I would like to. Maybe Riley McGree, maybe give him a bit of a chance, yeah. maybe just chucked him on. But, yeah, it kind of made sense. I think the changes in shape, I think we changed shape three, four, five times, which I think was, again, a really positive thing um, because it shows that Bayer isn't scared to change it if it's not going well or if he wants to try something different or if he thinks it's going to bring something different to the party. And I think that was just really refreshing to see that he had about down to plan E where Crank was plan A, plan A.1. And that was about it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, I think it was all, all there's some work there to be had, but generally I think we've got to take the positives out of that, you know, and I've seen people um, across the board saying, Oh, well, there's no such thing as a free hit. Yes. Because obviously the teams below us won and have caught us, but you know, it really was a chance to try these things out when we were losing. Um, why not? Yeah. When else are you going to get that chance to do it? You know, so I think it was all round a great time to try those. Good chance to look at players like San Jose, who's been out of the first team now for weeks. And um, I think Bo's got a lot now to sit in his office and uh, think about moving yeah. into the uh, international break and beyond. Yeah, and, and just on San Jose, um <clears throat> I've always felt that is he a centre half? No, um, but there's a footballer in there. There has to be. There has to be. You know, you don't play at the level he's played. What at. he's achieved? Yeah, all, all his career, and and I think I think Bowie will like him because he's a proper ball playing midfielder. Now I know he's not quick. At times, certainly under Karanka, his positional um, sense has not been brilliant. But I, I think this is a really interesting time now um, because I think Leko may well get into this team. If I'm I being think honest. he's got a goal in him, well, I, I think I think he's got a start in him. I think that because um, Bowyer obviously knows him, um, he rates him as well really he highly. Does. He said that himself. Yeah, and yeah. And, I, and I think that. Leco's demeanour in the last two games, I haven't seen that before in a yeah. blue shirt. Nope. I haven't seen it. Um, I really, I really were massively positive with his performance yesterday. Um, he, he, he still, there's a couple of things to just wind me up about him. But having said that, I think that 
they they Bella's been outstanding. Um, is he, is he um, bulletproof? No, I don't think anybody is. And I, and I said in the last pod uh, about uh, Bowie when we were talking about Harley Dean, you know, Lee Bowie doesn't owe any of these players anything. Fact. So yeah. what he's done now, he's had, you know, a, a good two games to look at a lot of players. He'll have definitely formed his own opinion. But as much as Craig Gardner is going to have influence he does strike me as a sort of guy, um, Lee Bowyer, that he's going to make his own decisions. Yeah, courage, courage yeah. of his own convictions, and I, and I think he'll he will pick the side that, that he feels is um, going to be the best repre- representation of of himself uh, and the type yeah. of football he wants to play. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me at all if the next game we do see a few changes. I think that, um, yeah, Hogan wasn't quite at it as he has been recently for me. I think maybe missing that chance um, probably had a a bit of an impact on him. Um, But, and we, and as you say, Tom, with with Juki sort of getting blocked off by Pedersen, I know it's unfortunate, but it just feels to me, we need to be better drilled at dead balls. I I shit myself every time we get, you know, if if it's a free kick or a corner, you know, it's, we look all over the place. Um, and to have somebody like Chalaber, who is always going to be a threat, it, we, we, we just need to be a bit cuter. And, and, you know, we can't be having this conversation against Rotherham or Derby or so, you know, play really well, but we didn't quite get that dead ball situation right because we're fucked if that happens. Um, exactly. He's got to iron it out. And I think there is a little bit of legacy from Karanka because you're not going to get rid of that in, in fucking... It's seven. hard to ship out in four days. Exactly. It's yeah. been seven months in the making. You ain't going to get rid of it in seven days. However, the strides that we've made in those seven days have been unbelievable for me. Um, and and I, I don't. I said to you, Carl, before we went on, do I want a 1-0 Karanka just utter shit, create nothing, get nothing out of the game, learn nothing, probably more than anything else? Or do I want to see a 3 0, which for me, it's more of a 2 0. I mean, the third goal, we, again, Tom, you're right. You know, we, we've definitely been, I think, guilty of just, just putting players into trouble. Just those hospital passes that, even if you've just got to do the simple thing and shove it in a channel, just get rid, nullify the threat. And I tell you what, Watford. That was the best head it and kick it display of defending I've seen all season. If it was any trouble, it was gone. Yeah. In the stand, corner, it didn't fucking matter anywhere because they're so well drilled when they set up. So if they can get it into a dead ball situation, even a corner, they can defend it all day. And I think that we can take a massive sort of leaf out their book there around let's not give Pedersen the ball when he's under pressure because he can't cope with it. And to be honest, I think the only one under pressure in our back line that is sort of okay is maybe Colin, but even that's a push. So the midfield need to understand that if we've got, if we're turned, either do the simple thing and get rid or give it to fucking Etheridge, whatever you've got to do, but just don't give it to the back line. Yeah. Because if you know that's a problem, even if it does break into a goal that shouldn't be a goal, we've still created the problem. So we've, got to under, we've got to absolutely understand that that threat, and if we if we keep doing it, it goes from being unfortunate to being fucking naive, um, because we all we, we all see it and we all know it. Um, yeah. But but I, I I just think the some of the football we played, just beautiful. It was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong; it, it wasn't all the time, but there were glimpses of. Glimpses. Wow, you know, just shifting it quick, you know, lots of movement off the ball, stuff that we haven't seen for Collins back heel pass. That yeah, was he, 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 does that all, he does things like that all the time, and, yeah. and, and I, I know that um, going back maybe maybe a month or two, uh, and Dacus Cogley came in and he had a good game, um, and it was sort of, and obviously Valerie, I don't know where he's gone, um, you know. It was there. He seemed like Colin was under threat, and I'm like, and I have said to so probably contradict myself. You know, we've we've got 
a defence that's never been good enough. But I always felt that was probably the, the centre-half position rather than the full-backs. And I've always had a bit of a soft spot for Colin, and I thought he was very, very, very good yesterday. Um, <laughs> but, but I do think this is now the time that... I think when Bowie came in, he, he wouldn't have had a lot of time to, to sort of plan around, you know, how many points did he think he could get out of the first two games? I think he'd have taken three. I think we all would have, to be fair. 100%. You know, and going into yeah. that, whether, yeah. whether it's Karanka or not, you, you've got to look at that and say that a three from six out of those two games with how those two teams have played this season is, is phenomenal. Yeah. 100%, um, yeah. And, and and I think, Carl, we, we, we mentioned about the, the, the coming two games. Given where we're at, we have to get something out of those two games. Now, what that is, who, who know, but even if it's a point... Two points. I'd take two points, yeah. to be honest. yeah. Because we've got to get some momentum into the games that really matter. Because... So long as we win against Rotherham, like yeah. But 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 the thing is, Tom, that you know, with their, their result on on Saturday and the games the games they've got in hands, I think Cov and Derby are as equally. You know, I know we're not. Oh, definitely, to... we beat Derby. They're straight in it. Exactly. So uh, you know, um, just just bizarre result yesterday for Rotherham. I mean, just fucking didn't see that coming um, at all. Derby he, didn't have a single shot like, yeah. on target the other day. Um, I think they only had two shots that ended up being nowhere near because a lot of my mates are Derby fans. And they're even the last few games, even the comeback against Brentford, um, they're similar age to me and they're normally quite positive, but they are really concerned. Like they, A lot of the points they pick up are very, very lucky. And, and, and you know, you go back to last season... And I don't think this season's going to be a lot different. I think Wickham have gone, yeah. Um, yeah. but it, w- it would not surprise me at all if it's Wickham, Derby, and Cov that go. It wouldn't surprise I me. No, I, I think Bolton. A few years back, you look at how they managed to survive, and Barnsley and Burton went down. Yeah, in my mind that day, uh, how yeah. they managed to stay up. And, and, and I think Sheffield Wednesday got some fight in them. Uh, obviously, they've got a new manager. They've huge got, result against an informed oh, Barnsley. Well. I think they've got some good, you know, with, with a striker like Roach, you're always going to get goals. I think... Um, he's Reach, what we miss. Yeah, Reach is, a, I, I think, a really underestimated player. I think he's a really good player. Bannon, as much as a shit house he is, I'd, he's, a, he's a fucking good footballer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as far as just tempo and control in a game, he's excellent at that. So it, it wouldn't surprise me at all and I'm obviously going to take us out of the equation because, I, you know, I, I'm I'm very much on the, I think, the front foot of us staying up. But, yeah, the, the way that I've never really fancied Cov, I, I, I just, yeah, don't see it. I think I think you've been a, without sounding condescending and admirable, admirable sort of um, tilt at staying up, but I just don't think they've got enough. Cov are similar to us. They struggle for goals. Yeah. And, they've and drawn think, a lot of games, haven't they, Contry? Yeah, yeah. And I just think Derby have got a bit of... Billy Big Bollocks without and not a lot of substance. Um, They've got individual quality and that's what's got them through a few games. Just moments of individual quality. They really lack team spirit and that, that's their problem at the moment. Yeah. And, and, and I, you know, I, I just think that we, we, it, it feels like we, we've, we've not really lost any ground, but we've not really got any any further forward. But no. we could have been right in the shit if we lost the two games. <laughs> Fuck yeah. it, that ain't that, that is not a good place at all. <laughs> no, um, exactly that. And I think it just puts into context how big a victory that that was against Reading now, doesn't it? You know, with all the yeah. results at the weekend, without doubt. So, so I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, there's a couple of things that, that I want to bring up. So, um, probably an obvious answer to this. So, uh, Carl, when you saw the uh, the plane and the banner flying over the ground, um, <laughs> what, what were your thoughts? I like the wording. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> I thought that was quite quite interesting. Um, I like the way that this guy panned straight to him in the crowd and caught him reading it. The thing is, it's you know other clubs have proven that if fans don't take a stand, things don't get noticed. Ultimately, yeah. you know, and and what what the fuck Paul Merson was on about on fucking Sunday? Oh, he's Saturday. a dickhead. He's a dickhead. Well, I'll never know. He's, he's a few drops about... of a piece. Let's be honest. <laughs> he's not even that, is he? Um, he, he was going on about how um 
oh, it's a terrible time to do it now. It should be at the end of the season. Apparently, Dong has, has pumped money into the club. Pumped and I was like, money, yeah. Yeah, and like, do your fucking research, Merson. Like, he hasn't put any money in. If anything, all of our fucking problems are generally down to him. That They can all be traced back to his decisions. Um, I don't no, even I mean, think it's the higher up ownership mm-hmm. that the massive problem. Like... No, it's him. He he is. You think he wasn't going to fire Cottrell? The higher ups had to do that. He wasn't going to fire Karanka. The higher ups had to do that. If I'd route when we what were we? we were a point outside the playoffs or something like that. Yeah, we were off I mean? it on goal difference actually. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> I mean, yeah, even club. and you just think you know like we went Zola who won two in twenty four twenty five and had to resign. He wasn't going to get sacked. And you just think well, no, Merson, you haven't done your research. This is why people are angry at him. You know, it's not that we just, it's just where we are. It's years and years of mismanagement. Um, yeah. But no, I mean, I'm, I'm fully behind it. You know, I think it's got to start somewhere. You know, Charlton approved it. Blackpool proved it. Ebo is the best man to handle that as well. Yeah. And I think his answer as well, I think uh, Brian Dick pressed him on it. Yeah. And he was like, it's nothing to do with me. You know, I'm here to keep this team in the league. Yeah. 100%. That's it. And I think that was probably. I mean, it might not have been some of the answers that some Blues fans might have wanted to hear. You know, maybe they wanted him to, to go a step further than that. But... Fuck off, Dong. <laughs> Could you imagine that? <laughs> well, I mean, we'll be looking for their third manager this season. Yeah. Um, then we'd but, be down. Yeah, we would be. Um, but, you know, I think something's got to be done. And fair play to the guys that are doing it. You know, they're doing it out of their own pockets as well, as far as I'm aware. So, And it was, it was just nice to see something happening and it acknowledged if that makes sense because at first yeah. i thought they weren't going to fucking do it because it was buzzing around for a good two minutes wasn't it before they looked they yeah. uh panned to it. and i was like come on so as soon as uh, i heard the plane yeah. i was like oh no way we've actually done it <laughs> <laughs> yeah precisely but fully behind it and fair play but tom you, you the same opinion yeah yeah 100 percent. i i completely agree with carl um I, I think my only worry was how it would affect the squad, but with Lee Bowyer's mindset towards it, I don't think it will affect the players too much so long as he keeps on top of it. Um, that that was literally my only worry with all this protesting. I just don't want it to affect the squad mindset because that can be an issue. But I do think I support what's going on. Like I think it's needed to be done for a while now. Probably would have been better off doing it earlier in the season. But uh, having said that, any time's a good time to get this bastard out. So uh, to be honest, I, I, I'm I, behind it. I just, my only worry was the squad really. But I think I think we'll be okay, especially with Bo, you're in charge. Yeah. So uh, no, yeah. it's, it's good. And, and you know what? I, I think that Dong is now so intrinsically linked to so many bad decisions that won't be lost on the players. I think he'll be gone at the end of the season. I, I'd honesty. be amazed if he is. And I, I, I yeah. cannot see... I just can't see it um, on so many fronts. And I now think that he's, he's, he's become such a, um, I'll say a joke figure that I don't think it will have any impact on the players whatsoever because I think they just get it now. You know, it, it, I think the, la- the last performance against Reading and obviously Dean's celebration um, and, and probably everything around that, um, I think I think spoke volumes for not just the appointment and, and the the capabilities of Karanka, but also the guy that appointed him, and you know just so many things he's done over the years. So I I actually think that in a weird way it's a positive thing because I think the players are because I, I can you can bet your balls. I think the players want him out as well. Yeah, but it's not, yeah, absolutely. But I also think you can bet your balls that Boia is saying to the players, you need to appreciate what these fucking fans are about. And the plane going across will 100% rubber stamp everything that Bowyer is doing. Because what he's going to be doing is siege mentality. We're all in it together. And anybody that's not in it together, like Dong, don't fucking worry about them because this is us and this is what we've got to do as a collective. And I think that, you know, lots of things on social media, you know, a lot of fucking Villa fans with plenty to say, um, as ever. They um, have no ground to stand no, on. Absolutely all the shit they've done. No it's ground to stand on. Absolutely obsessed. I mean, it's embarrassing. It's fucking embarrassing. I don't see so, bed sheets anywhere, lads. Or cabbages. Uh, yeah, I, I can't yeah. see the star player anywhere. Um, <laughs> I'll probably see the seat. Um, going to say the know, choir on the steps. I wonder where he'll, when he'll make an appearance again. So, 
yeah, I, I think it's it's the right thing to do um, because we haven't got a voice in the ground. We've got to do something and fair play to the people that organised it. And as far as Paul Merson is concerned, you know, a Villa shit out. Clueless wanker. Don't give a shit. Well, his best performance was in Medusa about 15 years ago when I saw him in there. And if, and if you know, you know, uh, there'll be people <laughs> listening to this that we all know. Um, <laughs> I so, don't, but I can yeah. pretty much gather where you're going with that one. <laughs> so, <be> yeah, absolute <laughs> joker. But, but as far as getting back to... Um, as I said the fans and the banners and everything, you know, keep going. You know, if you listen to this, keep doing it. It's the right thing to do. Um, so just going on to, we, we, we sort of talked about the Karanka press conferences after the game and what a shower of shit they are or were, thank God. Um, Tom, did you listen to the gaffer afterwards and, and were, you, were you happy with what you had to say? Very happy. Um, that oh, such a it was it was really similar to kind of you know your Gary Monk interview or your Rower interview. I think it was actually kind of a weird blend. Um, Rower used to be quite obsessive of the game, whereas Monk used to be quite obsessive of the players yeah. more so. So it was a, it was a good mixture, um, and I think he pointed out a lot of positives, but also ironed out the blatant negatives. Didn't beat around the bush. It was straightforward. And, um, you know, I, I love that he gave us kind of that snippet of what he said to the boys um, in the changing room. It does fill me with hope. Um, and I think, I think that's what the squad has needed. Just an arm, you know, an arm around the shoulder sort of thing. Um and the fact that they're finally getting that, we we might so, finally see a bit more of a positive mentality in the squad gradually. And I think this two week break is perfect timing, perfect timing for Boya to get to know the squad and really make something happen, uh, get that chemistry flowing. And he's already said plenty of times they're a tight knit bunch. They are already a tight knit bunch, um, who unfortunately have just been conceding individual errors this season so uh, you know you're eyeing out what's clear to see and this squad can stay up end of story um so no I was really happy with his post-match comments and he saw what we saw like you didn't feel out of line with what he was saying and I think that's how we felt a lot of the time under Karanka it feels like you'd see a different game to him because he'd always be like Oh, I thought we were a bit better here, sort of thing. Um, and I don't know, say that we were good and didn't deserve to lose when that wasn't true. Yeah. Um, yeah. So no, it was it was a good interview, and I was I was impressed with what Lee had to say. Yeah. Uh, and and Cole, do you like his style? Is it is it something as a fan that you like to hear? Yeah, hundred percent. I think you know Tom's hit the nail on the head there. I think you know it's. It's exactly almost a hybrid of the two Garys, which is a little bit bizarre, especially yeah. considering he's one of the jumper gang. Um, <laughs> and I just think, you know, just... The complete package. The complete package, exactly. <laughs> he's got the jumpers, he's the hybrid of the two. He's played at Blues, brilliant. Um, yeah, I think I think all... From my perspective, it, it's absolutely what resonates with the fans. You know, it's not, you know calling out net players like Cranker was necessarily, you know, it's not trying to sell us some bullshit that, you know, we've done better on the training ground. The training ground, I don't give a shit what happens on the training ground to be perfect. It means nothing. It means absolutely fuck all. I, you know, like my boss could, I could tell my boss that I do a great job at home. You know, I worked really hard at home, but it doesn't mean nothing if it's not fucking actually coming through on the systems at work. Do you know what I mean? And it's just, yeah, uh, I just think all that bullshit and all that negativity is gone, you know, and it's the, it's even just the whole, like, the whole posture. Do you know what I mean? It's not the, obviously, the shrugging. We, we're all well aware of that. And I'm pretty sure that's probably in Boya's contract to not shrug, to be perfectly honest with Don't you. Don't fucking shrug. Um, but, like, I just think that it's just it's just a, a, a fresh of breath air. Close. A fresh yeah, of breath air. <laughs> it's easy for you to say. Uh, let's change that because I can't find <laughs> it's, it's just really refreshing to have that attitude um, and uh, and I promise you I've not been on the pop and uh, yeah it just it's just something that, that just speaks you know it's almost like when Monk came in and he was speaking to the fans you know and he, he united the fans yeah. behind him and Boyer is doing exactly that he's getting the whole... to the fans definitely exactly that you know and he, i think it's the added extra that he knows what the fans are like he knows what this club means to us he's seen it you know on, on nights he's been on the end of relegation with blues he knows what that feels like but he's seen the good times as well 
And I yeah. think that is massive and that is why it's coming through the most. He knows what we want to hear and he's given it us, you know, and it's no bullshit either. It's just straight talking. This is how it is. I've told the players this. And also the fact that he, like I think we said earlier that he took a little bit of the blame himself. Yeah. He took that and said, I, I'll learn from that. I've done yeah. that. I, I've learned. Yeah. That's all you need from your manager, isn't it? It's just straight talk. 100%. Yeah, because, because I think, you know, not, not only will that, definitely strike a chord with the fans but it will with the players because you know let's yeah. not be naive enough to think the players don't listen to the bloody uh, post-match interviews of course they do hence why Harley Dean did his bloody shrug <laughs> celebration yeah. on that yeah. point the only way that Bowie is going to shrug is when we stay up two days to go and he's fucking <laughs> crimson so and says fuck you piece of piss wasn't it what's the problem <laughs> um, so but, but, but I think that, that his whole demeanour everything about him is exactly what he's right. And we have to, whoever appointed him, God knows who it was. I know who it was. And I think it was Zao. Yeah. yeah. Whoever whoever it was, you know, you, you have to say, you know, fair, fair fucking play. Give it, Zao the job. Fuck off, Dong. Well, you know, it, it, for me, it, it, it's not... Um, that that's he won't just, be in the office. Well, the thing is, that CEO role... It, it, it's sort of certainly given that there is no business outside of football, you know, it, it's, it's a nonity of a, of a, of a position at the moment. Um, all, all it's going to do is if you, if you, the only thing you can do is get in the way. And um, for me, he, his time is definitely up. And as I said, I think on a couple of pods ago, his brand is smashed to pieces, not just with the fans, but with, with the business yeah. and, you know, the Chinese, the way they, they go about their, I guess their culture and their business that they won't hang him out to dry because it's not what they do. He will just move on, um, and I think that will be at the end of end of the season. And yeah, as, as I said before, the the protests are the right thing to do because the guy is toxic. We just don't want it in the club, you know. We've got fucking hell. We've got a ground that's falling to pieces. We're fighting off relegation, and we just don't need any dickheads anywhere near any sort of. Uh, position of power, an eight is, managerial appointment. Yeah, yeah. And, and derail what we're trying to do here, because the reality is, as much there's a there's a part of me having seen the, the last two games where we'd have a lot of fun in League One, we would have yeah. a, a load of fun in League One. You know, a great gaffer, we'd lose some. I don't want it to happen, but Christ Almighty, I wouldn't mind it happening with a manager that we can really fucking hang on to and say, yeah, this is the guy. But first and foremost, we've got to say, well, are we better than Rotherham? Yeah, I'd like to think we are. Given what Derby are doing, can we beat them 100%? Can we pick points up along the way? Yeah, I think we can. So um, my, my, my view hasn't changed. I, I think, it, it unfortunately, it will probably go down to that last game again. Um, Unless we beat Rotherham and Derby, but- then I think we'll be fine. Yeah, but, but I think I, I, I just think it, it, it's 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 just the way that it is, and I, I always envy, ever since we spoke to Lee Clark a couple of months ago, and and he's had a lot of sort of detractors over over the years, and some of it probably valid, others others of it definitely not, given the the hand he was dealt. Um, but I thought Christ Almighty, if we get to the last game of the season with someone like Lee Clark, you can you can galvanise somebody for that last push. Because he's infectious and he's passionate, Karanka, fucking you know, hell, you get nothing. Oh, you yeah. get absolutely nothing. So with Boria, he's very much more in the, certainly in the in in the in the Lee Clark uh, camp. I think that sort of side of things, that that sort of real motivator. Um, um, and yeah, I, I'd, back, I'd back him every every step of the way. To be honest, go on, Tom, sorry, hundred percent. I agree with you, and I think this season now is you look at it from kind of the outside view I suppose it really does depend on how Rotherham <coughs> fare in that that those four games in nine days because that is going to hit them yeah. hard um and how yeah. how they uh kind of take to that challenge whether they relish it or whether they crumble will really really decide this season um so I I you know it will come down to obviously those Rotherham and Derby game as well even the Forest game because they're not in great form either themselves wouldn't surprise me in this league if they fell into the mix or back into yeah. the mix yeah so who knows and also just a quick question for you guys um obviously Boya hasn't brought in his uh, final assistant yet 
Um, you know, you look at what Monk did when he brought in BT and how clinical we all of a sudden became. Um, would you would you look to bring in as his as his last coach a striker? Because I, I certainly would. And I think someone like Kevin Phillips, who's an old band member uh, for Craigie and Boyer, I, I, you know, he he was he was assistant manager to Rowett when they uh, when they took Derby into the playoffs. So he's he's done all right um, in jobs. I'd be inclined to look at someone like Kevin Phillips, who's obviously been at the club and been with these two men specifically. Um, to come in and be, and we all know how clinical Kevin Phillips was in his day. So, um, you know, maybe we need that to finally get that clinical edge over sides and get those goals because you never know what he could do to Scott Hogan. Yeah. 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 Carl, do you want to take that? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I totally, I think we absolutely need that. You know, I mean, just without either any connection to the club, just on BT's influence alone. Yeah, you look what he did in the time that he was here. That was phenomenal. Yeah, um, you know, and and I think that he, I, I think someone similar to Phillips would be the right appointment for sure. Um, and with the ties to the club, like you say, it's getting the band back together. You know, and why not? What if if it's worked before? Why not? What could yeah. we possibly lose by even trialing it? Do you know what I mean? It's only going to pretend that it should have a positive effect. Um, so I'd I'd be all for that, and and I'd almost be. I guess in a way, kind of along the American football type type of thing, have a, an attacking coach, have a defensive coach yeah. as well. Do you know what I mean? Have the lot because that way, then you've literally got the whole area covered kind of thing. And obviously, you don't want them telling the team to do fucking different things to what the manager's telling them to do because that would just be chaos. Yeah. But like, yeah, why not? Why not? Get bring Roger in Johnson from to, Bromley. To <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know exactly. what? You know what, Tom? I I, I think what's been a real eye, eye opener for me has been people like, you know, Skip, sort of Martin O'Connor, Percy, Roger Johnson, Paul Tate, just talking fucking sense, just talking yeah. up the sense. And, you know, I think we've just gone through this real, and it is a buzzword at the moment, it's not complicated, and it fucking isn't complicated, it really yeah. isn't. And, and I know, and the other thing that Bo, you said, and to, to answer your question, Tom, Really, really cute with his answer around who's he bringing in. And he said, look, not the fucking time to talk about that. And that's such a good answer because he's so focused. That gets through to the players and the other people that are in and around from a support point of view that might be saying, fucking hell, could be out of a job here. He's just saying, look, I'm not interested in that at the moment. They probably know it's coming, but it ain't coming tomorrow. You know, let's focus. Everything that he's saying is focused on the next nine, eight games, whatever it is that we've got left now. And, um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't disagree. I, I'd, I'd agree with you both, both of you on, on BT. Um, I think when uh, we had a pod a couple of weeks ago, um, somebody mentioned that um, Che, I think his best season was seven goals before BT came in. And then exactly. he got whatever it was, 15, 20 goals, whatever. Um, and that doesn't just happen. That That's like any job. You know, it has to be good management or good coaching and lots of work. Uh, and that's why Chase the player that he is now. Um, and, I, and I think, I mean, Christ almighty, you say Kevin Phillips. If you could get Kevin Phillips to sprinkle a bit of that magic dust on, on, on Hogan, wow, you know, what a player we'd have on our hands. And I, you know, I certainly wouldn't write Hogan off yet. I think that, He's got plenty to offer, but he's obviously such a confidence player that I just think he needs that support, probably more so than anybody else. Um, And I think with Juki, we we touched on it in the last pod, What did I think his days were numbered? Yeah, I did. I'm not going to be a shithouse and say I didn't. Me too. I think we're playing a a system that suits him. Um, But what I do like is that if he's not on it, and and I think that I don't think he had a bad game yesterday, I think in, in, in maybe some of those half chances go in one day. They didn't yesterday. But at least we've got sort of Cosgrove to the, that can sort of be the exact replacement. I like that sort of yeah. opportunity. And as I said earlier, I think that I don't know where, um, maybe for Bella. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Halalovic and Lefko start next game. I think that's a, a real opportunity. Because again, 
you know, Bowie's got no allegiance to Sanchez and, and, and Bella. And he's, he's going to take it on face value um, and probably a little bit like Karanka did before him. Then he was a default to the players that he knew. So, you know, Sanchez always plays and San Jose probably got a bit longer run than he should have done. Whereas I think with Leco, it's the flip reverse. And fuck, you know, if we can get Leco to the player that I think we all thought he could be when we signed him, that's a handful. That's a, that's a, ma- that's a major asset. Um so yeah, so I mean, obviously we'll, we'll do a pod because we've got a break. We've got a break now until the next game. So probably probably not worth, I guess, going into any detail. What's what's on the horizon? I think there'll be things that come out of the club over the next yeah. week that we can talk about. Uh, the one thing that I would say, and I, I don't want to go out on a negative um, point, but uh, I am going to raise it because I think it's important. I don't know if you saw the abuse that Jude got on social media. Yeah. Uh, and it's just a fucking disgrace. And when are these morons ever going to let it go? He's still um, a child. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, do you know what, mate? I, I just think that the good thing is that these idiots are now ironically becoming the mi- the minority. Um, but until these social media platforms actually go through a, a, a rigorous, you know, sort of what know your customer check like you have to do when you, you know, apply for a loan, it will never change because there's that many fucking shit houses out there that are really brave. I'm sick to death of it. Um, and you know, exactly. And, and Jude is a is a is a product of a, a fantastic family, and he's a credit to himself and and you know our club. And um, yeah, I, I'm sick yep. to fucking death of seeing it. I'm sick to death of I it. Just- just want to mention quickly as well i know a lot of teams have stopped doing it now you know taking the knee and stuff you know if players want to do that then get a go ahead but for me that's not enough no um, and i think yeah. plenty of people will agree um you know if if people feel like they're doing their bit taking the knee then be my guest um that's great um but i just don't think it's enough and i think a lot of players would actually agree with that uh, that it's not enough because it's not it's not in any way clamping down on social media the way it should be. Um, so no, I think there needs to be more done uh, than yeah. just. And, and social media can do it tomorrow. Do Precisely. It tomorrow. But if they Precisely. want to do it, they could do it tomorrow. And do you know I watched the the old firm game and and Scott Brown going up to um, um, Kamara who got racially. I mean, that's what it's about. That was class, and yeah. Kamara well, didn't even well, take the knee. Well, like, um, no, so yeah, that, that's probably just me on my soapbox a bit, but I'm fucking sick of it. Um, me too. And, yeah, absolutely. You know, people want more done than just yeah, yeah. you know a few a few actions. We want them <coughs> done to the yeah. social media platforms, not just what we can do um, or what players can do. It's the people who own the platforms that need to take a stand, yeah. not just the people outside it. But uh, raising the awareness kind of brings it up to those platforms. But it's. It's just still not getting through, unfortunately. Yeah, and, and, and you know, every, every, you know, they, there are they are commercial entities. But what price do you put on something where, you know, you haven't got people like? And it's not just Jude. I think it resonates obviously more with us because of who he is. Yeah. But you know, he's a fucking teenager for Christ's sake. He's got enough. He's got enough to think about with the pressure on him. And I just thought, my God, what is the world coming to? So yeah, I ho- hope they get the houses in order. Um, but I'm with you, Tom. I, I think taking the knee, it served a purpose, but now's the time for action rather than just Precisely. You know, symbolic bullshit. Exactly that. It needs everyone coming together at the top of the game as well. You know, it's all good and well coming out with these messages of it's it's not tolerated, but there needs to be actual action, doesn't yeah. there? Yeah. Words and slogans are one thing, but you've actions speak much louder than that. And it needs I to think come we've from pushed FIFA, the messages UEFA. enough now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That. It needs to come from FIFA, UEFA, the FA these social media companies that even if the government have to fucking well get involved do you know what i mean it, yeah. something needs to happen because okay there are a variety of of people from all walks of life suffering from it and like you say because of jude's affiliation with blues this is why we're bringing it up obviously but he's a 17 year old we're boy. a multicultural fan base as well yeah, yeah. exactly like when we had um, the guys up. on the documentary didn't we on the, the sky documentary not that long ago a few weeks ago do you know what i mean and yeah it's just yeah. disgusting in my opinion yeah and so, so yeah, I, I just wanted to, to bring that up because I think it is important. You know, it's not just about, you know, yesterday, that, you know, we, we were a club and I've, I've said it many times. It, it, it feels and it, and it is for me, you know, it's bigger than a Saturday afternoon. It's lots and lots of other things that the Makers Blues fans 
So uh, yeah, on that note, um, Carl, thank you very much for your contributions, my friends. It's your no first worries. defeat. It, Become it probably, a fan favourite at the moment. Yeah. You have mate. <laughs> last. It's got to give the people what they want, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom, uh, as ever, mate, well done. Thank you very much. No worries, pleasure, mate. Right, that that's that's that for for this particular pod. Um, you know, defeats never never great, but definitely some really good signs. And the manager's talking sense, and that's just so so good to hear. Um, but you know, a big big sort of ten days ahead for him to really get his head around the squad. And let's see what we can do for the coming game and and, and beyond. But between now and then, stay safe and keep rides on.